All right. Our next speaker spent 15 years living in New Zealand, the birthplace of R. So everyone, please welcome Gwen. Excited to be here, and I'm super excited to talk about the R Project Sprint. Does anyone know what the R Project Sprint is? No. Okay, good. Then you are so, I'm so glad you came to my talk. <laughs> I can tell you what the R Project Sprint is. So um, let me just start by asking, does anyone have any idea how old R is? Oh, in the back, 20 years right yeah well, what was it it was it was it was um it was uh launched i guess in the year 2020 so it is about 20 years old um but the coding any guesses on how old the coding might be yes i know it's probably dead it's similar to code like i think it's well, you're very close. You're very close. But the people who started coding in R, so I happen to know Ross Ehecka, who was one of the people who invented R, they started coding R in 1987. So this is a really old language, right? It's been around for a really, really long time. In fact, this is the email that Ross Ehecka sent from Auckland, from New Zealand, where he's saying, you know, this is the R core team, right? So, so it's been around a really long time. And of course, that means what? That the R core team is, guess what? Is getting old. It's getting old. It's, that's the whole point. The R core team is getting old. And why should we care if the R core team is getting old? Because everything that we've done that we've talked about today is based on what? These 20 people in the world who are in charge of R core and all of the R programming language, and they're getting old. So this is what the, the problem that the R Project Sprint addresses and the R Contributors Working Group is also addressing is how do we transfer all of this huge amount of knowledge that they've been acquiring for 40 years into people who might we expect to live longer, <laughs> right? So this is the issue that we're addressing. Okay, so what does base R look like? Well, this is something that Paul Mural did. Paul Mural is uh, um, one of the R core team members, and he did this in JavaScript. And let me see if I can get this to point. Any guesses? Let's see. Oops. No, that's not what I wanted to do. But anyway, let's see. Let me try another. OK, so here we have all of these things. This is, the, the, this is actually the link to the slides. But this is the library and the source code and all this documentation and tests and packages and that stuff there. Um, so this is all of base R, but before we go into talking a little bit about the R project sprint, I just wanted to introduce you to the R core team. So here's the R core team. The first people, these are the people that invented it, the University of Auckland in the 90s, actually going back to 1987, um, Robert Gentleman and Ross Ehecka. Um, Martin Mockler, we can really thank because he's the one that convinced them to make it open source. Right. If we didn't have Martin, we wouldn't. It wouldn't have been open source. It would have been something you'd have to purchase. Um, Simon Urbanek, he's um, someone back there was talking about S. He's the only person to have worked in Bell Labs where S was invented, and at the University of Auckland where R was invented. And he's in charge of the Apple GUI. So anytime Apple changes their software, he updates R to teach it how to interact with that software. Um, Thomas Lumley, my PhD supervisor, he does surveys and he also is in charge of statistics. This is Martin Plummer. He also does statistics. Um, you know, they just work on this, the, some of the stats project packages and make sure that they're correct. Dipayan Sarkar, he is, um, he was in charge of code, com code completion. So, so anytime you type something into R, there's kind of this code completion. And that is how he got access to the R source code and became an R core team member. Um, and then Thomas Calabara, he's kind of the newest R core team member. Of course, there's more, but, um, but he is the one that has this huge server and he spins up a new version of R before, before they release it to make sure and does all the tests to make sure that it's not going to, that's not gonna break anything important, right? Um, Right. And then, of course, we have more and more people. One of the other people I just alluded to earlier was um, Paul Mural, and he only touches these green things here. He touches grid, 
he touches graphics and he touches the graphic devices right so this to me was a huge you know something i was super excited about hearing the reason for that is because i often feel terrible that i can't do the whole thing but the truth is, is that not even people who are members of the art courts you can do the whole thing right they just have their little pockets that they deal with and so that's really wonderful it's just like such a relief for me okay so what we're going to talk about next is like who has things that really bother them about R? Does anyone have anything that really bothers them about R? What's your thing? Dictionary. Yeah, dictionaries are better. <laughs> you don't like the dictionaries. Okay. What else? Oh my goodness. <laughs> what else? What else? Okay, so here's one thing that bothers the hell out of me. Uh vectorized. You know, at the very beginning of your code, you have to have library, 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 library. You can't just have library and then all the names of all the packages that you want to introduce. It just drives me crazy, right? So this is one bug. This could be a bug. You could call it a bug in R. We want to be able to vectorize these, you know, library. We want to put a vector in. We want to put in, like, load all these packages and then just load it in one thing and it's supposed to have a library, 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 library. It's just a big pain. Okay. So this is one, one problem that we have. But what do you do if you want to tell people about, you know, a problem that you have in, in R? This is what you do. You have this, there's this big bugzilla list. I, I copied this on Monday. Can you believe that there's, there are this many things wrong with R? Like, isn't that unbelievable? To me, that's unbelievable. But of course, we are part of a completely untraditional community. And so there's a much different way to do that, which is just to put it on social media <laughs> and, say, and say, please, I am so sick of this thing about R. Can you update it? And so that's what this person did here. He's in, uh, where was he? He's in Australia. And he went to the R source code and he said, I really want three digit hex, hex codes in the R source code. This is where it needs to be updated. Does this bother anyone else? Now, does it, does it bother anyone else or not? You, you, you never thought about it. Well, this is someone who thought about it and he was like, I really want it updated and this is where it needs to be updated, okay? So in August, we got together and uh, guess what we did? We updated the darn code, right? Because what he did, and the R source code is available on the web. I can tell you where, where to look for it. Winston Chang has it on his, there's a mirror there too. But he says, look, this page, line 365 of the R, R source code, all you need to do is update this. And then what we did here, line 365, we put it in, right? So there you go. But not only do you need to update the source code, what else do you need to update? Any guesses? Documentation, good work. Next, we update the documentation right here, right? Because you saw there was the documentation all at the top. But then what do you need to do next after you do the documentation? Testing. Testing, exactly. So then we write the test. So that's our testing here, right? Right, because this is a story I heard. Paul Mural, he, he put in something with, um, with our, um, what was I going to say? He updated grid one, and you know what he did? He broke because grid is the basis for ggplot. He broke ggplot, and he broke a thousand packages at the same time. So you have to be damn careful with your code if you're going to be doing this kind of stuff, right? You don't want to do that. Okay, so here we go. We've updated it, and guess what? We have one happy user in the room. I am so happy it took you three days and you updated my bug in R and this is so wonderful, right? How cool is that? I have never seen advance in software based on a social media post, but this is, so this is like my very first case study and I'm just so happy about it. Okay, so other bugs that we dealt with. And of course here we have here, but before we do that, let me just talk about my friend Amadou. So this is Amadou. Uh, from um, Senegal, he was he was one of the members of of the R Project Sprint. This is Serenji Carr, and this is you can see Shannon Pelegi something. Anyway, this is why Jared doesn't introduce last names. He just says, oh. but anyway. So this is Amadou, and he's submitting his first patch, right? So if you fix R, you submit a patch, and he just he just submitted his first patch. 
Isn't that wonderful, right? So um, other things that we wanted to update, this is another one, uh, alpha math. So what does the alpha do? So we're, what's the alpha value for in ggplot? Who remembers? Opacity, right? And so here we have we have opacity. Apple updated their software so the course is now now you can include opacity. And we wrote coding for this. Here we go. You are seeing the very first for our print our our thing that has some opacity in the course right here live on screen. How exciting is that? Thank you, thank you. So it's right there, and um, and uh, then here's some other the other work that a whole bunch of people did, which is this translations dashboard. So let me show you the translations dashboard, which is really really amazing. Here they are translating R into like 24 different languages, so that it's not only people that speak English. So you don't have this extra barrier of learning, right? Um, here's the web lay. Let me show you, and um. I think I'm gonna come on web late. Oh, right. And so here, this is how much we have updated, right? So obviously we're not doing very well in Albanian, but our French and our German is doing well. Any of you who speak any other languages, if you wanna participate in this, you, you absolutely can. So here we have Turkish, here we have Polish, here we have Norwegian, and then, um, you know, this is how much is translated versus, versus how many people actually speak the language in the world. Um, this is how many translators we have. And so they spent a lot of time working on translating this. And in fact, one of the other things that they're working on um, is going to be translating um, translating more of the documentation, right? Because some of the documentation isn't there. Well, um, the other thing I wanted to tell you about is here we all are. Oops, let me go back to the slide. This is not what I wanted to show you here. Oh, and let me go back to the slide. Okay, and then here we go here. And here's a picture of all of us. I hate having my picture taken. So I'm hidden back there with my mask on. Um, here is Heather Turner who organized it all. This is Luke Cherney. He's also an our core team member. I'm sure you could like pick out the our core team members, right? I think we're obviously like a bimodal distribution in age. And then here's Thomas Lumley um, and all of us. This, let me see if I can find Amadou, who was the person that was submitting the bug, which I, I see over here in the corner there. So there we are. And if you want to participate in updating R and keeping it up to date, and if you want to learn C, which is one of the R's of learning C, we spent a lot of time learning C together as a group before we got together, um, you can join this R contributors uh, working group, which is on Meetup, meet and you can email Heather Turner, you can get a Bugzilla account, you can post on social media about your complaints and your issues, and uh, and if you're lucky, then uh, someone might hear you. So anyway, thank you very much for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> let's let's make sure we can keep our alive kind of indefinitely. We don't want it to die with a, with a, with some of these people that know everything. So anyway, talk to you later. <laughs>